In this video, we're going to take a look at methods. And in my opinion, methods make coding a lot more interesting and a lot more comprehensible. So let's first talk about what methods are. Methods are bundles of multiple rows which are executed together and also organized together. And how a method might look like is this. We are going to build an animal shelter app in the upcoming video. So this method is in this team. And what are we looking at? Well, this method is called register animal. And when we want to execute this method, we expect a name and a kind. So maybe a dog called Harry. So we give in Harry and we give in dog. And what's going to come out is a boolean. And this boolean is eventually going to represent if the registering of the animal is succeeded or not. So maybe to make this a little bit more comprehensible, we have a small box which is called register animal. And here is the code inside. And we have two inputs, name and kind. And we have one output which can be true or false. So we have Harry and dog. We have the boolean and these are the types which are referring to so where does this boolean return to to the color of the method and the color of the method can then do a certain action based on the value so if it's false maybe it wants to show the user that something went wrong and maybe try again later and when it was true then the user gets a message that it has to authenticate itself through email or something because they have to verify in this case, the animal is registered or not. So what we can do now is really simple, and this we are going to implement in the code in just a moment, is just print out these values. So we print register animal and then the name of the animal, and then we can say, welcome such a nice dog in this case, if we put in dog. So let's go to our code and let's implement this. So what I'm going to do is actually delete everything we had before because we don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to start with declaring our two variables, which are the name and the kind. So now I'm going to call it name one in this case, and I'm going to say Harry and then kind one and then dog. And now I'm going to create our method and that we are going to do outside this main method. So let's start by the bool type, which is going to be the return type, then a name, register animal. And then we're going to expect two values, string name and string kind. And the first thing that we're going to do is just print these two out so we can see what is happening. What we are now able to do is go back to our main method and we're going to say varg succeeded is register animal and then we're going to give in these two values. So let's take a look, it says, oh, I forgot the one. And when we do that, then we're also going to print this succeeded. Well, and then let's take a look at what's below here. It says the function has a return type of bool that doesn't end with a return statement. That's because we have to return the boolean. We do that by using the return keyword and then a certain value, which is of type bool. So now it's fine if I now type here with a string, then it's going to say, hey, I can't return because I expect a boolean. So let's delete these two quotes. And now let's run this method. So let's take a while. And then we can see that how it works is we declare two values, name one and name and kind one, Harry and dog. Then we declare a boolean. And we're going to set it with the value that's going to return from this method that we declared here. And this method expects a string 
a name and a string kind. And what we have to do is give it to him. And we do that by giving the name one, separated with a comma, and then the kind one. And these two values will then represent the input values that we just put in. So this name one will be accessible by this name variable, and this kind one will be accessible by this kind variable. And then we can print these out. So that's why we see Harry, and then dog, and then we say return true. And something that's important is when we use a return key, then the method also stops. This, I can print something here and I'm going to probably see an error because it's dead code. And that's because when we use a return, that means that we're going back to the color of the method, which is the succeeded variable. So this can go away. And and when the method is done, we can print the succeeded out and then we say true because we re return true. Now let's turn this to false. And when we run it now, we can see that it says false now. But the nice thing about methods is that we can actually call it multiple times with different inputs. So if we add here a method with 20 lines of code and we would have to call it multiple times, then we just inside our main method have to use the method name and the inputs. If we didn't have methods, we should copy the inside of these methods and use them multiple times or loop over it or whatever. So this makes our code much more reusable. So if I declare now another piece, another set of name and kind, so name two, I'm gonna call it Fred and kind two, is going to be a cat. I can now again, we're just going to set the succeeded, register animal with the name two, kind two, and print the succeeded out again. So if I now run it again, then you can see that it also went through this method with my new values. And I could loop over this multiple times with a while loop or a for loop. And this makes my code a lot more readable. I know what this uh, method is going to do. It's going to register this animal. And I just want to know if it succeeded or not. And this way it's a lot easier to understand what our code is doing without multiple lines of code. In the next video, we are going to actually register the animal with a list.